It's a long one, deep in the left center. Back for Jean Frito. Back, 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 back. He makes a one-handed catch against the bullpen. Oh, doctor. Baseball fans, start your home video triple play and add three great baseball tapes to your collection. Call 1-800-3-BASE-HIT to order Super Duper Baseball Bloopers for all the hilarious slip-ups and unbelievable plays. Call 1-800-3-BASE-HIT to order This Week in Baseball 1990, an exciting video yearbook of a historic season. Call 1-800-3-BASE-HIT to order the 1990 World Series and capture the Cincinnati Reds' stunning victory. Visa and MasterCard users call 1-800-3-BASE-HIT to order each tape for $19.95 or all three tapes for $49.95, plus shipping and handling. Call 1-800-3-BASE-HIT or send check or money order to MLB Home Video, 1145 North Ellis Street, Bensonville, Illinois, 60106. When I'm on the baseball field, I'm able to create as I feel. Um, it's sort of like having an artist sit down and take his brush to canvas. There's a hopper flagged by the Wizard of Oz. Oh, is he something? Oh, he is magnificent. I think the greatest thrill, though, is diving, catching a ball that you shouldn't get to, that a guy thinks is a hit, and you throw him out, and he slams his helmet down, and he starts cursing you. I love that because I know I got to him. Ground ball toward the hole. Reynolds, a diving stop from his knees to first in time. What a play by Harold Reynolds, saving a run. If there was any fun on the field, for me, it was the great play defensively, making the great play and, and talking about it the next day. And, and I would work on the great play. I, I, never, I didn't like to work on routine ground balls. I like to work on, uh, you know, the tough ones and the strange ones. Right back and off the glove. And he will not. Mike Schmidt, what a play to get him. Whoa, whoa, look at this. Oh! Everybody, this is Mel Allen. Welcome to This Week in Baseball's Greatest Plays. This Week in Baseball debuted in 1977. It was television's first comprehensive baseball highlight show. And we learned right away that you fans love to see the great plays, so they became a staple of our show. Of course, the bloopers have been a big hit too, but it's the great plays that have provided the biggest thrills. And we'd like to honor the players who made them. One player who frequently occupied our spotlight was Fred Lynn. In this case, he was a victim. But he usually made the show by robbing other players. This catch was our first really great, great play and helped put Twib on the map, or in the TV guide anyway. In his 16 seasons, Fred wore the uniform of five different teams. The only common colors on those uniforms were black and blue. God, no wonder he hit it. The pitcher's right down the middle. That's right there. When the ball's right over the top of the fence, that's the toughest part of that play. Really, it's basically a, a, a play where you just run back to the ball and you, you catch it. The fence is there, that's all. I mean, if you have the ability to go back on a ball and know where you are in the field, it's not as difficult as you think it is. It, it looks pretty impressive. And right there, right now, my arm is getting scraped on the fence. But that's the tough, there it is. That toughest part is bringing that ball back and keeping it in your glove. It's famous in the fact that it was done on a game of the week. And um, a lot of the times that we had games of the week, 
I was making plays. And um, it was fortunate for me because I started to get a reputation as a good outfielder by just some of the replays that people saw on TV. Herbie slaps the left center field, and Lynn gets there to make a diving grab. Baseball is made to be played on the grass. You're not going to see this kind of play on turf because, number one, if the guy misses it, it's going to go back to the wall and they can get an inside to park home run. You can't take as many chances of making plays like this on artificial turf. To center field, Lynn coming on. I like the way I bounce up in the old days. I like that. Yeah, they throw the ball down in disgust. Don't do that again. I want the ball hit to me in, in a crucial situation. I don't want anybody else to, to be able to mess up. I want it on my shoulders. What makes this catch really a great catch is that it happened in the middle of the pennant race. We went on to win this game one to nothing, and then we shut them out the next game, and we effectively put the Yankees out of the pennant race this day. And fortunately, I, I work on my gloves a lot, a lot of oil. And so I keep them very supple, very soft, so that when the ball goes in there, it doesn't come out. Here's Guerrero drilling one to left. Lynn back at the fence, leaps up and makes an unbelievable catch. How can I justify to my pitcher that I'm not going to die for a ball when it means you know his ERA might go up, we might lose the game? The fans come to see me play the way that Fred Lynn knows how to play. They don't want to see me stand out there and let balls drop in. I can't do it. I couldn't do it. So I did get hurt. And, and um, looking back on it, um, I wouldn't change it. And it's just uh, the way I am. And, and my mentality says that if somebody hits the ball my way, I'm going to do everything I can to catch it. Notice it's in high in the air to left center, way back. Way back, Downing is back there, so is Lynn, it is hooked by Lynn. And Downing and Lynn collided at the wall, Downing shaking up, gets to his feet. That's very dramatic, it's fun to watch this one, I, I enjoy watching that. Look, oh, from that angle, it looks like he's gonna kill me. Look, oh, he does go over me. Oh, well, there's the end of the wall. Well, I was worried when he was coming that we were gonna have a, like a train wreck out there. And, uh, Fortunately, I went over him and was able to get the ball and avoid hitting him at the same time. And when I saw the replays, I couldn't believe it. Uh, the next day, they had to replace that section of fence because both of us hitting it. Brian's a big guy. We hit the fence. We moved it back about three feet. We bent the poles and uh, that were there in cement. <laughs> So uh, we could have been killed. I mean, I could have stepped on his head. I mean, it, it, was, it was really ugly watching it. I was more afraid watching it than I was doing it. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, watching Fred do it makes me wonder if he knew what he was doing. If I had a crystal ball and I said, I could see what was gonna happen before it happened, I said, hey, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Fred Lynn wasn't the only outfielder doing it. Just check these guys out. Butler, can he catch up with it? Yes! Does he hold on? Yes! Shadow center, Devereaux. Oh, oh, makes a tremendous catch! To left center field, Calderon! Hard to left field. Venable, he makes the catch. Some of those guys really paid their dues. And now, fans, you're in for a real treat, a twib flashback. The year was 1978. Afros were a big hit then, and so was Padres rookie Ozzie Smith, who made it to the majors after just 69 games in the minors. How about that? And when the course of this ground ball changed, so too did Ozzie's eminence. On this particular play, Randy Jones is pitching and Jeff Burroughs is hitting. And there's a ground ball hit to my left. And um, as I dive for the ball, 
with my glove hand, the ball uh, inadvertently hits a rock and bounces back behind me while I'm parallel in the air. Well, the only way to get the ball, because my glove hand is gone, is to reach back with my bare hand, which I did in this particular instance, and the ball hit in the palm of my hand, it stuck, and uh, I was able to get to my feet and throw them out. I think it really hit me probably the next morning when I got up, and people were talking about it on the radio. You know, people were saying things like, this possibly was the greatest play I have ever seen. And I'm saying to myself, the, the greatest play that they've ever seen, that means that baseball's been around for a long time and no one has really seen anything like this. I guess that makes it special. So that was the first time that, that people really realized that Ozzie Smith had hit the same. That's Len Barker. Now what's he doing in a great plays video? You know that Len was perfect one night in May of 1981, but he wouldn't have been if his teammates hadn't made some perfect plays. Barker cranks it up. The strike one pitch to Bassetti. There's a live shot. Kuiper backhands it on one hop. The throw to first, and he got it with a scintillating play. The windup and the pitch to Griffin. He smacks it on the ground. Kuiper has it going to his left. The throw, and they get Griffin by a step, and another fine play by the captain. The best play of the night was made by Toby Hara. High pop, third base side. Toby Hara drifting over near the railing. He leaps up. He grabs the ball. What a catch. What a play by Toby Hara. Right up over the top of the railing. As he caught the ball, he tumbled into the first row of seats. What a play by Toby. Naturally, Barker did his share. Most of the outs were easy ones. Fly ball, center field. Manning coming on. He's there. He catches it. Len Barker has pitched the no-hitter. A perfect game for Len Barker. Len's name might not have gone down in the history books if it wasn't for some perfectly timed help from his teammates. Of course, Barker's not alone. Several no-hit pitchers owe special thanks to their teammates' special plays. Here's Socia. He struck out in the second, struck out in the fourth. Hit deep to right center field. Poole going back. He makes the catch. That's ball hit down the right field line, going into the corner's kip. In the corner near the line, leaps up and makes the catch. Juan Diego has had his troubles with Eddie Murray, at least last year. Murray went four for ten with a home run. A little looper, and it is caught beautifully by Pachorik in left. And with two outs in the night, Nieves again faced his toughest out, Eddie Murray. Hit in the air. Yount makes a great catch, and Juan Diego has thrown the first no-hitter in no one. Here's the one two pitch. Line drive, great ball! Charlie Hayes! Charlie Hayes spares it, and Mulholland has pitched a no hit, no run game at Veterans Stadium. The first nine inning no hitter in the history of the bat. Of course, not every perfect play decides the fate of a no-hitter, but they're still a joy to watch. And if you're scoring at home, I'm sure you'll rate these perfect tens.
This Week in Baseball proudly salutes players' innovations. With the 86 Mets, Keith Hernandez shredded the myth of immobile first baseman. He created a great play by taking advantage of certain players' disadvantages. I think the one part of the game that is not up to snuff is there's not enough pitchers that are, know how to bunt. And so they go up to the plate, they're not confident in their bunting skills. So in that respect, that's the only part of my game defensively that I can intimidate, where I get down their throat and they see me and they know, well, I can't hit it to first base. I can't bunt to first because I won't get the runner over. If this isn't the most obvious bunting situation, I've never seen one. Hernandez right on top of Willis looking for the bunt. Carter in at third base guarding the line. And Hernandez sneaking even closer. The ball is butted to Hernandez. An easy play at third. They get the force play. Carter's throw to first is in time. A double play. So Hernandez, another one of those great plays, taking that ball right on top of the hitter. It's always, I'm going to get the lead runner out, not settle for second best, and then make your decision, and don't be afraid to make the wrong one. Hernandez sure can do magic with the glove, but he's not baseball's only sleight of hand artist. Watch magician Dave Bergman. First, he makes the ball disappear, and then the base runner. It's the old hidden ball trick. Devious, but effective. It's sort of easy to detect a pitcher's pickoff move. It's the first baseman you have to watch out for. <laughs> San Francisco's Robbie Thompson thinks he has a stolen base, and he does plus a little egg on his face. Uh-oh. Have you heard the song, We Won't Get Fooled Again? Ozzy Guillen has it. Look. He throw to first, hitting Guillen back. And Guillen's out! He took his hand off the bag as Brock half faked the throw back to the pitcher. He really didn't think Ozzy was gonna move. Poor old Ozzy. First he gets it from Greg Brock, and then he has to contend with the master, Dave Bergman. And he's out. That's the second time Ozzie Guillen has had that happen to him this season. Trying to get up, he comes off the bag before the first baseman gets rid of the baseball. This is insult to injury, though. Watch, his, watch how he hits him in the head. Ouch. Well, it just goes to show you, you got to always keep your eyes on the ball because you never know if or how it's going to be caught. On a play like this, a fan usually gets a souvenir, but this time he loses one, thanks to Mike Schmidt. Mike didn't get to keep the shirt, but he did get the out. Most pitchers, by the way, will do anything for an out. Case in point, Terry Mulholland. Right back to the mound. Good stab by Mulholland. Runs most of the, the throw. What? This is a classic. This is going to lead this week in baseball. The ball stuck in his glove, and that's why he ran so far at first. He couldn't get it out, and then he attempted to lob it with his glove hand, and the glove went with it. And Brindley caught them both. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't gloves grand? Some really creative players don't even need them, like Ellis Burks. Hey, look, Ma, no hands. Louis Tiant must have been a soccer goalie when he was growing up. How else could you explain this kick save in a beauty? Hey, <laughs> nice going, Louis. Rick Camp takes it just one step further. Cincinnati's Paul O'Neill gives conclusive evidence that you just don't need a glove or a good arm to play this game. Base hit right field, but they're going to have to hold Jelts at third goal. And now the ball gets away from O'Neill. He kicks it to Benzinger. No, I do not believe it. The absolute all-time play I may have ever seen. Now, right here, he is, after he bobbles, it hits on the heel of his glove, off the hand, off the shoulder, off the hand. Watch this. Boom! You will never, ever again see this, so take a look. The Cincinnati Bengals are on the phone. O'Neill's punt kept a run from scoring. It also secured a spot for him in this week in baseball's Hall of Fame, alongside some other players whom you won't necessarily see in Cooperstown, like our old friend Dwayne Kuyper. It was more than 10 years ago when I played with the Cleveland Indians, and that was before fans could get to see a lot of baseball on television. 
Back then, quite frankly, this week in baseball was the only way fans could get to see their favorite players. And trust me, it was also a thrill for the players to be able to see themselves on the show. Well, thanks to my defense, I became somewhat of a regular. And as you can see, I would go to great lengths to get to the baseball and to get on the show. This play for me was bittersweet. It got me on the air, but it knocked me out of action. But that made room for my replacement, Dave Rosello. Rosello, not a household name, got his chance for airtime on This Week in Baseball. Thanks, Dwayne, and you're right. You know, we've shown all the stars on TWIB, but we've also shown the spotlight on hundreds of players who weren't exactly household names. Like first baseman Boomer Wells, who played just 47 games in the majors. Hey, nice grab, Boomer. Look up Wally Pipp in the baseball encyclopedia. Joe Pittman is on the same page. There's Pepe Prius. He played nine seasons, even at a home run. We love you, Pepe. Here's an assist by a point guard, Danny Ainge. I hope you beat those Celtics, Danny. Ike Turner doesn't make this catch. Ted Turner doesn't make it, but Jerry Turner does. Here's downtown Daryl Brown. Nice. And who could forget Ron Svoboda? Well, that's not him. That's Gary Rasich. Juan Espino was just a 219 hitter, but hey, he could catch. And rounding out our all no name team, pitcher Mike Stanton, who will never bowl again. Knocking the 10 pin down isn't as important to Jack Lazorko as, say, making a glove save. The Zorko was the goalie on his high school hockey team. He won just five games in the majors, but you know he had one game that earned him a spot in the Twib Hall of Fame. Hit back up the middle, nice play by Zorko. Oh, we talked about that earlier. What a cat he is on the mound. And going to try to punt again. Zorko, you're not going to get it by him. Two great plays by Zorko. Right back at Zorko, he does it again. Glove save. A routine day for your average goalie, but for a pitcher, well, it's more like one in a million. And now it is a triple play. Whoa, brother, you don't see many of those. You don't see many of those as right. Triple plays are about as rare as good airplane food. But you can be sure of this, if there has been a triple play since 1977, it's been highlighted on This Week in Baseball. Bouncer to the right side. Johnny Ray coming in. He looks Carter back to third. Now the throw they got to Strawberry and a run down between second and third. They got the out at first base. Gonzalez chasing Strawberry. They got out number two. They had a chance for a triple play. Gonzalez to Ortiz. Ortiz chasing Carter back for third. Ortiz takes a triple play. Go to third. Go to second. Go to first. All right. Ground ball. One. In the dirt. Nicely pulled up. Oh, they got to get a triple play. How do you like that? A triple play. Oh, doctor. Gary Gaetti has been involved in five triple plays, which is pretty amazing. More amazingly, two of them occurred on the same day. And who provided the six outs? The Sox. Third base. One there. Two there. And a triple play. They go. And Gaetti has won. They got two, and they've got another triple play. Mercy me, Gerald. Mercy me, Mel. Have mercy on the Sox. Now let's move forward by going backwards to another TWIB flashback, the year 1985. Buck Martinez shared the catching duties for Toronto in 85, but there was one play that gave him more than his share of action. 3-2 pitch again to Gorman, swung on, ground ball to the right side, base hit out of the right field. Here comes Bradley, Ronnie third, the throw by Barfield, and it's going to be in time. The collision, Bradley bowls Martinez over, Thomas will wind up on the third base, Ronnie third, the throw gets by Orange, throw to the plate, and it is in time to get Gorman. 
That is one of the most incredible throws and catches by a catcher I have ever seen. I think that Buck Martinez was semi-comatose, to tell you the truth. I had a ground ball through the hole to first and second base, and Jesse Barfield's got a cannon, and uh, he threw the ball at a dish, and Buck had the ball 15 feet before uh, Phil Bradley, you know, got there. And it was a clean play. And when he hit him, evidently his toe was caught in the uh, toe hole in the batter's box. The ankle gave, snapped, and he went over backwards. It was all reaction after Bradley hit me initially. I saw Gorman running from second to third, and I thought I'd try to throw one down in that direction, but it didn't uh, work out that way. And uh, the next thing I know, I saw George Bell picking up the ball, and I, I realized he was going to throw it to me. And he made a great throw. It just happened to bounce in my glove. You're looking at the finest catcher ever featured on This Week in Baseball, among the best of all time. Johnny Bench retired in 1983, concluding a brilliant career. My father uh, got me into catching. I was about uh, five years old, I guess, when I first realized what baseball really was and what my ambitions were in life. My father thought that catching was the quickest way to the big leagues, and he thought that uh, that's what the big leagues needed. And uh, as a result, uh, I had a reputation as a catcher all my life because I started out as a catcher when I was six years old in Little League. National League base runners would have been a lot happier if Johnny had chosen another position because he sure mastered this one. He revolutionized one-handed catching to protect his throwing hand. Throwing was Bench's forte. He had an arm like a howitzer. See what I mean? I always took care of my arm. In minor leagues, though, I'd love to show it off. I'd, I could stay on the home plate and throw it over the left field fence and on a line, and that was just something I was blessed with. My big hands helped probably in controlling the ball and being able to grab it and get it out of the mitt. I worked on my transfer, I worked on getting quick feet, quick hands, and then I just took the style that worked best for me and just sort of molded it into what soon was to be my major league style. Oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Eat your heart out, Eddie. Talking about masked men, Bench is clearly the leader of the pack. And among others who've excelled at the position is Carlton Fisk, who on one unusual play stood out from the crowd while being caught in the middle of it. Salazar way back. He can't get it. Misham went back and tag and stumbled. Now they got two men at third. They got to wait one around. Gotta get them both. We'll get them both at the plate. There's one. There's two. Woo! Look at that I play. I don't believe it. Look at that play. Fisk's double play was a catcher's glory. But plays at the plate are usually a lot more gory. Dempsey knows how tough it is defending home plate. He's got memories of a broken thumb to prove it. Ball tapped to the mound. Bale's going to go to the plate. Dempsey puts the tag on Bo Jackson and hangs on. Third down, six yards to go. It was like getting hit by a small car. I held him to less yards than the Boz did during the season, but uh, I knew I was in serious trouble when they sent a proctologist in to set my thumb. Of all the great catchers who've appeared on This Week in Baseball, none consistently blocked the plate better than Mike Socia. Here comes going to the plate. Marshall's throw to Socia. He is blocked out. Socia has been knocked off his feet many times. He was even knocked unconscious once, but held on to the ball. I don't remember too much of anything about that collision. I was, I was knocked out for about five minutes. The throw to Socia. What a tag! And I don't know how I held onto the ball. I think the ball just held on to me and he was out. I have never in my life seen a catcher block home plate like Mike Sosia. Now let's explore another baseball innovation. This one comes from Benito Santiago and promotes sitting down on the job. Santiago knew that standing up to throw cost him valuable time, so he decided to stay low and then let it go. 
That is as perfect as you can throw. And did you notice that he threw from his knees? But you just can't realize that this guy can do what he can do from his knees. There goes Samuel. Hit and run is missed to the plate. And a great throw. Oh, my gosh. What a throw by Santiago. Oh, that's unbelievable. Unbelievable and unbeatable. Unconventional is a fitting description of Bo Jackson, who burst onto the baseball scene in 1986, one year after winning the Heisman Trophy at Auburn. Bo brought a fresh approach to the game, which if you're listening, Bo, there's nothing wrong with. It was just that he had a way of doing things differently. So now he's reading a bubblegum comic. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe unconventional isn't the right word. What word would you use, Bo? One word, hustler. Bo Jackson coming on. And he makes a play. Here's a drive into left center field. Jackson on the run. He caught it! Can you believe it? He gives you all he got. And you know, he's got a lot to give, so he... Just had to just sit back and just watch Bo just go to work. Jacoby is tagging. And he's going to test Bo's arm. Here's the throw. He got him. Bo on the charge. Bo is there. Yo, Bo on the run. Bo. Bodacious. Bo Cephas. I'd call him Sir. Money. No. <laughs> he's God, as far as I'm concerned. Bo Jackson on the run. Makes a diving catch, a tremendous play by Bo Jackson. I've known this guy for 26 years, and uh, nothing he does fazes me. Toward the corner in left field, it's going to be up to Bo Jackson to try to stop Reynolds from scoring. He can't do it. Yes, he can. I don't believe it. He made an absolutely perfect throw. It looked like there was no way he was going to get it. You know, superstar isn't a bad little word either. If Mel knows that Bo can throw, you can be sure all the base runners around the league know, too. Certainly Carlton Fisk does. Bo isn't the only major leaguer with a rocket in his socket. We've combed through the Twib library and come up with some of baseball's top gunners. Like Dave Winfield, who's been launching airstrikes for years. I was always blessed with the with a good arm, but I always worked on defense. I wanted to be good. I wanted to be important. I wanted to stand out. And so I, I focused on accuracy as well as strength. Dwight Evans is a bona fide base runner's nightmare, though that's not who he's aiming for. I think the guy you intimidate the most is, is the third base coach. And a lot of times they save me just because you do make that good throw or you, you're noted for hitting your cutoff man. You do things fundamentally sound. And they're aware of that and you do have a good arm. They're going to be leery to, to send a guy. And sometimes you'll have a guy run through a coach too, which is all right. Then you throw him out and then it really, that really just uh, uh, makes it better the next time you face that ball club because they won't run on you and that coach is going to hold them up even more. Eric Davis is a highly respected member of the Don't Run On Me Club. If you saw the Reds play the Pirates in 1990, you'd gladly pay tribute to his triceps. Catch is made. Here comes Bonds. The throw by Davis. Barry is up. The throw he made in the Pittsburgh series with Bobby Bonilla, that may have been the best play I've ever seen. Way back at the track. Hatcher. The strongest arm I've seen in, in the major leagues would probably be Ellis Valentine uh, in his prime. I mean, he had one of the strongest arms I've ever seen, and he was the type of player that when a player thought about going to extra base and they saw Ellis pick the ball up, they, they might have changed their minds quite, quite quickly. In the 79 All-Star Game, Dave Parker's amazing arm went prime time. Pops it up, right side, Parker. Morgan. Lost it. They lost, lost it. it. It drops. And it's a two-base hit, and Rice is going to try for three, and he will not make it. Line drive, right field. We may have a play at the plate. Big hop. Here comes Downing. Here's a throw. It is. He knocked him off the plate. What a tag by Carter. 
I think that's when people really became aware of me having a strong arm was that throw in the All-Star game. Uh, of course, I'd had like, uh, you know, 21, 22, 23 assists, 25 assists one year. But I think that particular play kind of let the world know that, uh, that I had a strong arm. I think you'll agree with me on this one. When you see an outfielder make an outstanding throw, it makes you want to say, how about that? Now, let us take a quantum leap backwards. A TWIB flashback. The year was 1981. For this flashback, we travel east, far east. If you want to impress your friends, remember the name Masafuni Yamamori. The Japanese left fielder ran up the fence like it had steps on it. Now that's an amazing catch. How about that? Six years later, Yvonne Calderon treated a Detroit audience to almost the same thing. Deep to left, Calderon looking up, home run! I think he caught it. He got, he got on that fence and caught it. What a play. Is it me or is Detroit always about six years behind Japan? Well, who's that familiar looking guy hoisting the Yankee 78 World Series flag? I helped raise the flag, but Greg Nettles helped win it with some great plays against the Dodgers. Look at that! Oh! That is an amazing glove. Henry's pitch to Smith. Ground ball to third. Nettles dies. Backhands it. Gets up. Long throw to first. He got him. Here's Henry's 0 1 pitch. Smash to third. Backhand by Nettles. Gets up. Goes to second. Got it. Oh! Impossible. Well, I know, because I was there. Greg's show was one of the greatest ever seen in a World Series. Let's watch some more memorable plays from World Series past. The good old days. I'll be your host. Hmm, I wonder whatever happened to that hat. I think I still got it. There's Joe Rudy in 72, and that catch came in the ninth inning of game two and helped the A's beat the Reds. Now, I'll let some of my old friends talk you through some other serious series plays. Swung on belted, back for John Fito, back, 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 back. He makes a one-handed catch against the bullpen. Oh, doctor. One and one. High fly ball to shallow, well, medium center, and he should come home and score. Wynn makes one throw, and Ferguson took it with the better arm to throw. The 2-2 to May. Swing ground ball, third base side. Brooks Robinson's got it throwing from foul ground toward first base. It is in time. There's a drive in the deep left center. Racing hard is A.G. What a grab! Well, A.G. saves two runs. One of the most talked about plays in the World Series was made by Willie Mays. And if you're from Cleveland, well, don't watch. There's a long Commissioner Faye Vincent earns an honorable mention from his very first World Series. The Giants Will Clark caught the ball, but look who caught Clark. That's all from the newsreels, folks, so let's get on with the show. Behold the Griffies, baseball's first family. Ken and Ken Jr. are the first father and son duo to play in the majors at the same time. Junior goes to great lengths to keep his three-time All-Star father out of the way of his progress. And it's Ken Griffey Jr. taking the play away from his father. I'm sure you can see the resemblance between the two, but if you can't, maybe this will help you see the likeness. My ball into deep left center field. Griffey going back to the 1A track, leaps high in the air, and he's got it! Oh. An incredible catch by the kid! He takes away a home run from Jesse Barfield climbing the wall in left center field. Hey, some catch. But how did Junior learn to climb the fence in Yankee Stadium? 
There's a fly ball down the left field line. Griffey going over, leaps, and he's got it. He took a home run, the time run, away from Marty Barrett. How about that, Ken Griffey? Listen to the crowd roar. Now that's a great catch, and uh, reckon a pretty decent call, too. Well, we've got time for one more Twib flashback. The year, 1989. The focus is on the fielder, Kevin Mitchell. The batter is Ozzie Smith. And the play, well, it's unbelievable. And that's sliced uh, to left field, and it's another chance for Mitchell, and he makes a fair-handed catch! In my entire life, I've never seen that happen. Willie Mays, the only other guy I know that's ever done that. Got to be the play of the year. Definitely the play of 1989, and surely one of the greatest plays of all time. We've spent a lot of time in the outfield, and now let's embark on a flight around the infield, starting off with Hall of Famer Joe Morgan in 1983. Next up, future Hall of Famer George Brett, 1980. Up the middle, Willie Randolph, 1982. Here's Cal Ripken, Jr., 1985. And there's Randolph again, but this time he's robbed by Doug DeSensei, 1987. Pitcher Jeff Ballard, knocked down but not out, 1989. Great stop by Terry. On his pins, throws him out. Sharply hit toward the hole, Fernandez, the off-balance throw, they got him. Look at Doran. Oh, my. Oh, 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 oh. Check out Butch Hopson, vintage 1979, and then 10 years later, Randy Milligan. And that's a shot up the middle, a diving stop by Cruz. Over to Gillian, double play. Breaking ball, nice play by Gaetti. Can he get it? A looper in the center, a great catch by Sandberg! And let's hear it for the infielders. One special infielder was missing from that piece, one who ranks as this week in baseball's top glove. Playing shortstop, making his eighth consecutive all-star start from the St. Louis Cardinals, Ozzie Smith. It's funny because uh, no one ever really said to me, you know, you go play shortstop. It's, it's like one of those things that's always been there. Oh, something like the spray. When I became a junior in high school, I think is really when baseball became serious for me and I realized that I had a unique talent. Hands. Gotta be soft. Gotta have soft hands, George. Gotta be soft. To be a good fielder, you have to develop the ability to improvise. <laughs> oh, watch this. It's here somewhere. Can't do it, George. Can't do it, George. It's like taking candy from a baby. I've gone to home plate trying to steer the ball away from Ozzie Smith many times, many times. And there goes that ball right to Ozzie Smith. <laughs> Base hit up the middle. No, Ozzie Smith grabs it, throws the first. What a great play to end this inning. Can't get it by, George. You can't get it by. You hit a ball to hold and you say, oh, that's a base hit, and you look up, and there's Ozzie making a play throwing the first base. You say, oh, jeez. Here she is, swing, and a one-hop shot. Diving play by Ozzie. Long throw, you wouldn't believe it. Then you hit a ball over the mound, and you say, oh, that's a base hit, and you look up, there he is behind the second base in the outfield making a play. So I told him, don't hit the ball to the left side, hit the ball to the right field. So stay away from that guy. Yes, sir. Ozzie from the outfield grass. Talk to baseball people who have seen everyone play day in and day out in the last 25 years, and they think Ozzy's a, a notch higher. And uh, he does some spectacular things, and I get a kick out of it. I mean, I watch TV and I see these great defense he plays, and I find myself cheering for him. I've been cheering for him too. Ozzy Smith, this week in baseball's top glove. I've really enjoyed looking back at this week in baseball's greatest plays, and I hope you have too. 
And as long as the players keep making great plays, we'll keep bringing them into your living room. If you really want to make us feel good, hit rewind and watch them again. Fly ball to deep center field. Gary Pettis going back at the wall. Leaps. Got it. I didn't know Gary Pettis could jump that high. Popped up outside the third again. Shall we try it one more time? Yes, we will. Oh, look out. Martinez makes the catch. That's out to Zavala. He caught it. It'll be a double play. What a freak double play. Coming in the star. Holy cow. He's going to get a double play. What a magnificent play. It just keeps going, and it's going to be. He caught it. He caught it. He caught it. Harold Baines drives one to right field. Orsalak going back at the bullpen wall. What a great leaping catch. <laughs> hey, kids, you got a future in baseball. Maybe not on TWIB, of course, but somewhere. Now beat it.